Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Learners Republic Policy Fellowship 2022. Um, in this fellowship, we have with us um, Amjad uh, Hafiz Saha with us, and we are truly glad to have him today because today we are uh, we are focusing on a topic that is power generation policy in the in the context of a circular debit. When it comes to this nourishing topic, we don't find anyone as best as him, as he's he belonged to this industry for quite long time, more than a decade. He is a civil servant and he has been teaching in various leading university in Pakistan. Um, and with this, uh, his highly experienced uh, uh, background, he's also a graduate from University of Cambridge in engineering and sustainable development. So that suits more when it comes to this topic. And I think this is one of the major topic to address and to discuss when you people are going to be the future policy maker and the policy analyst. Um, welcome, sir. Welcome to LRP 2022. I'll just give you a short introduction about our cohort. This time we have a young emerging cohort of 50 fellows. And when it comes to 50 fellows, it's not just about social sciences. We have people from medical sciences to media sciences and data sciences. So we are diverse in all the disciplines that we are coming from. 18 cities of Pakistan has been covered with 50 fellows. And the applications we receive is from more than 30 cities. Um, this is uh, a time to change and this is a leading generation. And we are hoping for a promising future for Pakistan. With this, let's start your session on circular debit for the power generation policy. Thank you. Uh, can I start now? Yes, sir. Sure, please. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was a kind of, uh, uh, it was very uh, considerate about me. Uh, I've just uh, around 17 years of experience, uh, around five years in public sector, uh, private sector, corporate sector rather, and uh, um, past 12 years in the civil service and, and a major portion of that is with the link with the power sector. Uh, uh, why are we focusing on uh, uh, the circular debt? Circular debt because it, it is the uh, phenomena it is uh, which is uh, affecting the supply chain of uh, energy sector in Pakistan. Uh, and uh, why energy sector? Why energy sector policies? Because uh, at the international fora, you see we are focusing. Uh, uh, under the sustainable development goals and various other commitments, we are focusing on uh, zero emissions, carbon emissions uh, by 2050 and uh, to keep the uh, temperature average uh, global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, Celsius or less than that by 2100. Uh, and the energy sector combined uh, if you see the electricity sector, transport, as well as the uh, industry, uh, it contributes uh, around 70 to 80 percent of the emissions, uh, anthropogenic uh, emissions uh, into the uh, atmosphere. So these are the major contributors. So the world is the, the developing as well as the developed nation is uh, are focusing on uh, uh, emission reductions so they are focusing on uh, energy sectors so the energy policies are key uh, in the future uh, in the right now as well as in the near and far future so we start with the uh, uh, typical uh, 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 we will discuss the circular debt, which is in the electricity sector of Pakistan, uh, and uh, it it is circular in the supply chain, and its impact and its remedial measures, what uh, the government is taking and what we can do. I have just uh, simply uh, uh, designed this presentation in cause effect relationship, so that you are able to understand, and then of course. Uh, even the implementation or the technical issues, administrative issues are dependent upon the uh, uh, the policy process. So I, I'll discuss the four aspects of this uh, uh, circular debt. 
So these are the uh, simple with abbreviations which I have used, and uh, you can go through these ones once you have covered um, the presentation. Um, so uh, there's a bit noise coming from your end. I think a bit uh, music maybe. Oh, wait the uh, just a moment, please. I guess my the youngest one is uh, having uh, some kind of music. Uh, Uh, So uh, these are the abbreviations, uh, various terminologies which I have used in during this presentation. Uh, so the problem of circular debt in power sector, power sector you can say it's electricity sector. So normally we use it, uh, the power generation policy uh, rather than the elect uh, electricity generation policy. So we actually talk about the energy, electricity is the energy, power is actually power. The, the, the people who know uh, a little bit of uh, physics or thermodynamics, they know about it, uh, the conversion. Uh, now, uh, the, it actually started to appear in power sector in 2007. Uh, and uh, it was discussed in the Senate uh, Committee on Circular Debt, which was formed by the present government. So it, it actually started in 2007. And before 2007, there was no concept of uh, circular debt in power sector of Pakistan. Uh, the then, and right now it's a 2.4 trillion rupee as uh, of, uh, it's not 2019, rather it is December 2021. And it was discussed in the Cabinet Committee on Energy uh, meeting uh, in December last year. So it is actually uh, in December 2021, it was 2419 billion, uh, means 2.4 trillion rupee is the circular debt uh, in, in the power sector of Pakistan. And it is actually, uh, rising at the, at around 30 to 35 billion rupee uh, per per month so it means uh, it it is uh, right now it would be around uh, 2.5 trillion i guess uh, uh, after uh, it means uh, it's, it's around month after the uh, after that meeting and uh, uh, this 900 and out of that 908 billion is the syndicated term finance facility this is the loan from the commercial banks and uh, against the uh, distribution company's assets. And uh, these uh, loans have been used to pay the circular debt previously. So combined, this uh, comes to the 2419 billion rupee in total. If you have a look at uh, annual electricity uh, generated last financial year, it is around 143 billion units. Or you, uh, the people who know about power sector, you see 143 uh, terawatt hours, terawatt hours, or you can simply say them uh, 143 billion, billion kilowatt hours. One unit in Pakistan is normally they say unit is the kilowatt hour, so 143 billion units is uh, the, the number which was generated and consumed in Pakistan uh, in last financial year. So if on average we take the average cost of generation uh, from uh, uh, October or November last year, uh, the reports by RFB Limited and various other uh, analysts, it is around uh, rupees 14 per unit is the cost, generation cost. So it comes around 2 trillion rupees electricity which we generate. And imagine against the 2 trillion, at the one year's electricity, and we have the 
circular debt more than that cost of electricity of one year. And uh, we will have this lower presentation, what is circular debt, impact of circular debt, causes of circular debt. Of course, we will be focusing on hardcore policy uh, issues which have caused this circular debt and uh, conclusion. And then we will discuss some remedial measures. And this is the uh, electricity generation, transmission and distribution process. You can simply say this is the process of the national grid. What happens that uh, furnace oil and RLNG, these are used, uh, uh, PSO, SNGPL, and SSGC, they provide this. And uh, the generators, the electricity, they generate electricity, IPPs plus Wabda Heidel. This Wabda Heidel is added to this point from here because they do not consume any kind of PSO or SNG, SSGC is the furnace oil or RLNG. Uh, and this goes to the central power purchasing agency. They purchase this electricity from generators on behalf of the distribution companies. And from distribution companies, they uh, provide this electricity to the consumers. This is, uh, you can say, a simply uh, process or the supply chain of the electricity in Pakistan. And uh, if you see, this is the process uh, of tariff. Whatever you pay and whatever is charged to you, uh, at the uh, in your electricity bill, this is how it, it is generated. This is how it happens. This is gen generation. Here it's capacity transfer charge. We talk, uh, listen a lot about uh, the capacity payments. These things are the capacity payments. And the, these are the permanent feature. The, the first one uh, under the red, these are the Capacity payments, land purchase, design, procurement, construction, taxes and duties, fees and infrastructure, insurance, admin and utility, everything. This is added to the generation cost. And then the energy charge, price of fuel, thermal efficiency, in, uh, in aging and cleaning, depreciation, you means output, heat, etc. This is energy uh, charge. And uh, of course, the variable operation and maintenance uh, of the plant, that is the third component, which is added to the generation uh, tariff. This is the cost of the generation, the first column. And the first one, A in it is the capacity payment. This, this is the capacity payment, which you hear a lot about it in, in, in the media or everywhere. And then there's the transmission. Transmission uh, use of system charge that that is added to the uh, th that tariff generation tariff, and then becomes the distribution tariff. What happens? They add the power purchase price. Uh, this power purchase price is uh, consists of the capacity transfer charge, the first one, gen the whole generation, uh, and uh, uh, this is the power purchase price is actually uh, the generation tariff plus the transmission tariff, you can say. So these four things add up. Uh, this is called the power purchase price. And then uh, the distribution margin. Distribution margin is the margin, which is uh, actually the distribution companies like Lesco, Fesco, Gapco, uh, Kesco, Koita Electric Supply, Sakra Electric Supply. They then add their distribution margin. And this distribution margin is their operation and maintenance cost, the salaries of their SDOs, line superintendent, uh, wages uh, of the staff, lower staff, then the depreciation of their equipment and other things. The, this is the distribution margin. And they add the uh, C, if you see the, in the third column, this is the transmission and distribution losses allowed. NEPRA allows them, the, the regulator allows them certain losses, which they again add in the tariff. Whatever the losses are means the allowed uh, these are actually paid by the consumers. And then the prior year's adjustment, like the various kinds of adjustment, like you pay the fuel price adjustments uh, as well. Uh, so the, the different kinds of adjustment are added. And then you actually pay this tariff and consumer tariff, A plus B plus C plus C, this one. Or everything is counted towards the tariff. 
so if generation tariff is this so uh, these things uh, then these things are added to the uh, these b c and d is added to this generation tariff and transmission tariff then you uh, the end consumer pays and then of course the taxes uh, sales tax as well the, uh, then you pay this end consumer tariff this is end consumer tariff the tax is above that tariff so this is how I, I just uh, uh, most of the people will not be actually uh, having it complete its complete understanding because it's more of the financial uh, uh, kind of the flow but still you will be able to understand that there are uh, for at least four components of the uh, tariff of electricity which you pay uh, as a consumer so this is you see uh, this is the cash flow and circular debt this is the cash flow oh, uh, electricity consumers they are private then the government then the government cppa then the generators they are private as well as wapda the hydel power plants but we consider them the private uh, but major portion is by the private so that's why i have written private here then the government pso sag this is how the cash flows consumers pay the bill to the government distribution companies and then they pay to the cppa they pay to the ipps and they pay their uh, the, the fuel cost to the pso plus ssgc and sngpl so how the circular debt develops here uh, look at between one and two uh, what happens uh, at consumer end there are 20 percent line losses around 20 percent on average you can say it, it varies between 15 16 17 18 19 20 so an average it is around 20 19 or 18 or 20 and then of course whatever is built out of that around 10 percent or between 6 to 10 percent is not recovered means uh, there is theft of electricity and various other issues like that then of course the subsidy to the uh, people who are uh, who consume less like 50 units 100 units or less than 200 units so they are provided subsidy so there is delayed payment of that subsidy to to these uh, uh, dis uh, discussed by the government so these three factors are swelling up so these are between one and two this is developed and what happens next so the discos uh, pay less to the uh, cppa because they have rec uh, recovered less and then what happens they actually uh, uh, government uh, cppa pays less to the private generators uh, to power generators and what happens uh, uh, receivables and fuel payments uh, it is also developed towards the uh, uh, between four and five so uh, gap of subsidy amount and delay in tariff notification uh, the, the the tariff notification whatever uh, whichever tariff is determined by napra that tariff is not immediately notified by the government it goes to the federal cabinet and then it takes a little bit of time and that's why the gap of you can say a month or two it also developed the difference between the actual tariff which is being charged and uh, uh, the tariff which is uh, actual on the cost basis there's a difference that's why if you see in the tariff uh, last slide there was uh, at, at the bottom there was a d column the uh, prior year tariff adjustments so these adjustments are made uh, are paid after you consume the electricity after six months or three months or two months depending upon this notification so these all these factors in this power sector's cash flow this is the circle that you see it's it's just a kind of a circular kind of uh, uh, debt development that's why it is called a circular debt i hope you uh, people have been able to understand it uh, um, is there any issue up till now any questions or we will have question and answer session at the end of the lecture thank you so uh, what happens when there is a circular debt Potential investors are discouraged. Uh, CPPA has to pay uh, 
uh, within 45 days on invo invoice generation to IPPs as per the power purchase agreements, they have to pay within 45 days. And if they are not able to pay that amount, then the, the uh, number one, the interest starts developing on that for uh, that uh, late payments. So that is called the late payment surcharge. The people uh, amongst you or uh, who are not able to pay the bill, आपने uh, देखा होगा कि बिल के ऊपर लिखा होता है कि to be payable after due date. The difference between uh, the, the payable before the due date and after the due date, whatever is charged, that is basically the late payment surcharge, because the discos have to pay that surcharge on your behalf to the IPPs. That's why uh, this late payment surcharge. So they have to clear that their invoices within 45 days. Otherwise, there will be interest. So that they. In 2013-14, the PMLN government came uh, into the power and they paid around 480 billion circular debt because before the start of the uh, CPEC energy progress uh, project, because China was showing apprehensions about it because there is a debt, so they they was they were thinking that how their uh, payments of their energy generator will uh, will be made. So it uh, discourages. Uh, and then return on investment is uh, they are uncertain about it. And of course, uh, circuit debt causes the cost escalation for end users. Uh, for example, just one example that uh, the uh, the loan which the government has uh, takes from time to time uh, through STFF from commercial banks. Right now, the rupee uh, 54 pesa per kilowatt hour or per unit is in your tariff and user tariff is because of the interest on that payment, around 908 billion rupee. So uh, 54 pesa per kilowatt hour is being paid by the end consumer tariff, uh, end consumer to the discos for that uh, simply for that interest payment so this is how it this is just one aspect of uh, i'm just uh, telling you the one aspect of the cost escalation in end user tariff and interest on payables keeps on piling which is then added to tariff that is passed on to consumer whatever is not being paid to the ipps right now the interest on that after 45 days is piling up and of course that then that interest will again be charged to the consumers through the tariff so of course the increased load shedding uh, wherever there is no uh, you see uh, less payments then of course they uh, they will have liquidity crunch and they will stop uh, uh, generation uh, stop their power generation and they will not be able to supply to the national grid uh, and then of course uh, one thing standby letter of credit uh, for lng suppliers is of 45 days by the pso or the pll oh, if they are not able to pay within 45 days automatically this uh, standby letter of credit is operated and the sovereign guarantee uh, and that is cashed by the, those LNG suppliers, the, whichever suppliers right now are supplying to, uh, uh, to uh, PSO and the PLL. So, of course, the reputation becomes at stake. And uh, then around two and three years back, the, the nine IPPs won similar case against NTDC in, um, in London, I guess, and they were paid 14 billion rupees. So this is how it happens. It, it does not go, send good vibes about the country. Uh, so it, it, it uh, normally means because the government of Pakistan, as uh, the state of Pakistan is given the sovereign guarantee. So the sovereign guarantee, when they, you are not able to pay, then ultimately it means that uh, the, the government's entity has, uh, has, def, uh, has defaulted on its payment. So it's damage to the reputation of the country. And of course, it 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 uh, it actually uh, affects your credit rating as well, and with lots of you can say cascading effect on the economy.
So there are four major dimensions of these uh, circle that causes, you can say. And these are one way or the other, these are linked to the, uh, the policy gaps and resultant flaws. Administrative inefficiency, that is also, in my opinion, linked to the, uh, the, the uh, policy. Then the technical issues, yes, there are technical issues, but uh, you know that technology is a means to the implementation of a policy. So uh, these technical issues may be a kind, a kind of separate thing, but these are linked with uh, the policy as well. And then the political inaction and resultant flaws. Political inaction, because the, uh, as per the rules of business, uh, the political leadership, the federal cabinet and the prime minister is responsible for policy making in Pakistan. So uh, I wouldn't, I won't say, I won't say the, there are issues, but I won't say it, the political inaction or uh, there are lots of issues, but then again, this is related to the, because the policy making is the domain of the political leadership. That's why a kind of political inaction because of various reasons, various issues. So this is also linked to the uh, circle that is also, uh, the, uh, this is also linked to the, um, I will discuss it, or oh, it's uh, 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 political inaction uh, because of various issues, various constraints. Uh, so these are linked with, the, these are the four uh, dimensions of the circle that. Uh, hello, uh, if I was discussing that how it is, uh, the policy, uh, it is linked, these things are linked with the policy process. If you see this, uh, the stages model of policy making, what happens and one way or the other, this is also followed in Pakistan. Uh, what happens, problem is identified, then agenda is set for the cabinet meeting or the wherever, whichever forum is this, they decide that, okay, we have to address this problem. And then uh, they draft a policy means the political leadership plus the uh, the bureaucracy, they draft a policy and the technical hands draft policy. And then they uh, send it for legitimation of the policy to the federal cabinet or the prime minister or the, uh, or the committee of the cabinet, like the uh, cabinet committee on energy, like the uh, economic coordination committee. So they send it to the, for policy legitimation. When, if, if the policy, is not approved by the competent forum, then that policy is not a legitimate policy and people are not bound to follow that policy. That's why the policy legitimation is necessary. Now, the, what happens after that? The policy execution and the policy implementation. Policy implementation is actually the administrative kind of issue. That's why the policy is linked with the administrative issues as well. If the policy is not a successful policy, that means there is uh, an issue of the implementation or various other issues, but major issues, if you discuss are the reason, uh, major reasons of the policy or the policy failure in the implementation. And then the, uh, of course, the, why the policy did not bear fruits, the, the, the policy is evaluated and then again, the same cycle is repeated. This is how the policy process is linked with the administrative inefficiency and political leadership here, the policy formulation and the policy legitimation is actually done by the, uh, even the policy formula formulation does have the technical hand, the administrative hand, and the policy or the political hand. And then typically the policy legitimation has the political hand. So the policy process is actually linked with all the uh, factors which we have discussed, uh, the four aspects we discussed. So hardcore policy related causes, which are those like uh, full cost recovery issue, uh, we do not recover the full cost of the electricity. For example, the people the, which we call the lifeline consumers, uh, 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 less than 100 units, they pay at rupees five point something per rupee. Although the cost of the electricity, the generation cost of electricity is around uh, average basket price around, around 14 and a half rupee but they pay rupees five point something, uh, excluding the taxes, but it actually add up to uh, six, seven rupees. So the, you do not recover the full cost of the electricity from the people. So this is one of the policy issues that you, the political, uh, the decision has to be made because the politically, these decisions are not that much popular decision. That's why 
uh, it is actually it remains uh, an issue which causes the circular debt because uh, the cost is not completely recovered that cost actually swells up uh, in the power sector supply chain as we discussed then the capacity payments the first a in the first column of that tariff related slide it was rupees 185 billion in 2013 rupees 642 billion in 2019 and rupees 860 in 2020 and would reach around 1.4 trillion in 2023 so uh, this is how these have increased uh, because you see the first a portion in the first column uh when you install a power plant plant the, the capacity market uh, it's not like the simple market ke for example kisi ne yahan pe restaurant khol liya aur like uski government pe koi liability nahi hai see uh, the consumers will go the aap khana ja ke khayenge bill pay karenge to theek hai लेकिन ये पास सेक्टर इज सच एन इशू दैट देर आर कैपेसिटी मार्केट अराउंड द वर्ल्ड इवन इन इंडिया दर इज अ कैपेसिटी मार्केट वॉट हैपन्स वी से ओके आर आवर डिमांड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव वुड बी अराउंड पीक डिमांड वुड बी अराउंड थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड मेगा वॉट्स सो दे आर पीपल आर नॉट इन्वेस्टिंग इन इन द सेक्टर वट वी डू ओके वी से ओके वी विल पे यू uh we ensure that we will be paying the, your investment through your through the tariff so you come here and you invest so we ensure you that we will uh, uh, not only recover you your cost as well we will recover your return on equity for example 17% 20% whatever the profit is ensured through, through the uh, uh, through the uh, through the power policy so this is called the capacity market so this is increasing because our uh, installed capacity has started to increase that's why against that installed capacity we are actually uh, uh, the, uh, adding the cost of the power plant as well so if in one year in 2012 if there there was uh, 100 megawatt of plant the, of course the addition of the capacity payment would be less because uh, that cost of one power plant is less but of course when we will be adding 5000 10000 ma- megawatt in a year uh, so the capacity payment would would swell up so it is a good thing as well as the, as bad thing in both ways it goes both ways so uh, and one another thing is a kind of policy issue or the administrative uh, the delay in tariff notification napra determines tariff but ministry of power uh, does not uh, notify it immediately it, it goes to the federal cabinet the cabinet approves it and then the tariff is notified and then st- slow structural reforms privatization outsourcing of distribution and retail market and then th- there was ctbcm the new concept of uh, competitive trading bilateral uh, competitive trading bilateral uh, contracting market a kind of retailing market open for all anyone can purchase and uh, sell so it's very slow it, this law was passed in apra's amendment was passed in i guess in 2017 or 2018 so the, 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 the because of various issues various uh, internal uh, structural issues the this the progress on this uh, is really slow so this is also kind of policy issue so it it is also adding to the inefficiency of the uh, the power sector and ultimately that adds to the losses and recovery issues and that adds to the uh, circular debt and then of course the del- dollar indexation of electricity tariff a generation tariff is dollar indexed that for example the uh, the lng power plant they they have around uh, uh, 9 cents per uh, around 9 cents per uh, per uh, kilowatt hour uh, of uh, indexed uh, tariff i guess it's uh, around 9 cents uh, as per uh, my understanding uh, don't remember correctly but it's it's against the uh, the it is indexed it's not in rupee it's in dollar term so that's why whenever there is fluctuation in the exchange rate so ultimately that adds to the end consumer tariff in rupee term so that uh, again adds further to the uh, 
the cash flow uh, debt of the uh, power sector supply chain. And then uh, if, if you see, this is how it happened. Like uh, we'll just go through it that in power policy 1994, there was following incentives were provided to the uh, uh, investors, uh, the IPPs. Then again, some were uh, uh, removed in the power policy 1998 and new incentives were introduced. Then in power policy 2002, there were some other incentives and uh, certain were removed, then other were added. Then power policy 2013, it was focused on energy efficiency, affordability and financial viability. Power policy 2015, then again, the 2002 power policy, almost 2002 power policy was restored. So this is, but it, 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 it was on the basis of the valuation. Okay, we are not getting much of the investment in the uh, power sector. So they said, okay, let's remove this thing. The investors are saying that we need this, this incentive. Okay, let's add it. Uh, so the power policy actually it keeps on so that's why we say it's just kind of uh, organic kind of thing the power policy the policies be, the, these keep on changing according to the time although there are issues lots of people identify the power policy as, uh, as responsible for the circular debt and various other issues and high cost of the electricity in the power sector because of uh, but of course there are goods and bads in each policy uh, so the, I just have uh, I wanted to have you people a glimpse of the uh, the incentives which have been given and various incentives which have been taken back during the course of time since 1994 when the IPPs were first introduced in Pakistan. And then administrative inefficiency that is uh, the issue of the implementation, uh, commercial losses, theft. Uh, NAPRA says that it is 4%, but uh, actual um, may be different. But of course, we will say 4% is still a huge amount. Uh, when we talk about uh, 4 billion, uh, 2 trillion cost of electricity, imagine 4% uh, where it goes around 80 billion. Unable to recover, build amount, 90% recovery. So that also then adds to the power sector. These are the inefficiencies of the uh, of the sector. So, log kehte hain ki hume bill zyada dal diya, yo flan chori kar raha hai. So there are issues. That is due to the administrative inefficiency of the sector, of the implementation teams, right from the line superintendent or the meter reader or the line man uh, to up to the hierarchy of the distribution company. So these are the inefficiencies, and these are linked with the implementation issues. And then uh, a 24 billion receivables uh, are uh, of uh, uh, distribution companies from consumer. And these actually add to the interest and then these add to the uh, circular debt as well. When, uh, when the consumers are not paying that, of course, the government has to pay it from somewhere. And then the technical issues, the technical issues, technical losses of the distribution system, they take 14 to 16%. <clears throat> well, in Japan, these are around 4%. And in UK, it's around 6%, I guess, 6 to 7%. In India, India, these are comparable to us. But of course, these are not the, in my opinion, these are not uh, the pure technical losses. Uh, the, 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 actually, the technical losses are less than that. And these, the inefficiency, administrative inefficiency is added to this one way or the other, because we do not have a pinpoint uh, mechanism. The NEPRA does not have that mechanism to determine this. They actually pick the, some bank benchmarking from somewhere and then they implement it. They do not have the tools to measure it. And then, uh, of course, this is also political inaction. Uh, we would, we, uh, I would not be blaming the political governments over here. There are issues which are linked, and that's why the government is unable to implement uh, the decision. For example, subsidy, they have to pay the subsidy to, to, uh, to the poor, uh, people who cannot afford energy. 
the energy poor people, they, the government pays it from the public kitty. But the, it's in an, an, an action. There's lots of pressure from various uh, multilaterals, IMF, for example. But government uh, uh, having the responsibility, the state having the responsibility to provide this to the people uh, of the uh, from the lower strata of the society. Uh, around 200 to 300 billion in various forms goes. For example, agriculture, two wells in Blostan, they, sub, they are subsidized. You know, FATA in uh, ex, uh, erstwhile FATA, private consumers, they are also subsidized. Uh, and for energy poor, less than 200 units per month, they are subsidized. Actual cost is around 15 rupees generation cost, but they are uh, charged at around 8 to 10 rupees per unit on average. And less than 100 is charged at around 5 to 6 rupees per, per unit. And then industrial support program as well, various industrial support programs. The government uh, uh, provides electricity to the uh, various industrial sector at the low cost and the government pays from the public kitty uh, to the uh, distribution companies. And uh, as uh, AJK uh, at 2.59 rupee per unit, the rest delta is paid by the uh, government. So uh, it's, you see this, these are the issues, the GAPCO, Gujramala Electric Power, LESCO and PESCO provides electricity, ISCO and uh, PESCO, Pshar Electricity uh, uh, Supply Company provides electricity to the AJK, then of course, this uh, they provide at 2.59 and they actually purchase at 13, 14 rupee. So this delta is bridged by the government of Pakistan. But of course, uh, because of the political reasons, uh, constraints, the government cannot withdraw, uh, with, uh, despite the pressure, the government cannot with, withdraw that uh, uh, these measures the, which they are taking for uh, the backward areas or the poor, poor uh, energy poor people uh, of the country rationally thinking the, if from economic perspective they will say no just charge it but of course the state has some other responsibilities as well and then uh, export of electricity from idle plants the plants which uh, remain uh, un underutilized we can export the electricity to India. And for example, there was a proposal of 500 megawatt to India in 1998. Then again, import of electricity was discussed in 2013-14, but we did not could not make a headway because of our issues with the India. But right now, uh, we are hearing the news about uh, import of uh, some um, commodities from India. The government is willing, then uh, of course we can have a kind of uh, uh, some transmission link with India, and then uh, export the power and purchase the power at the low low rate, as far as the uh, we say at the cost basis is concerned, uh, ignoring the political uh, risks. And Mayes adopted the permanent solution was not adopted, of course, uh, and uh, commercial loans. Uh, have been procured to retire the circular debt. Uh, the various cook bonds were issued around 908 billion uh, rupees cook bond have been issued up till now. And these are uh, issued against the distribution company's assets. Uh, and there is uh, presently there is no plan to pay these loans back. But of course, government is devising various uh, uh, the kind of policy measures right now under discussion to uh, to uh, retire these uh, uh, these STFF payments. Then conclusion is it's a major problem of power sector. Uh, it has hampered new uh, investments resulting in load shedding, cost of electricity is increased, reputation of parks are at stake. There are procedural and structural flaws in Pakistan, which result in circular debt. Uh, and these are because of the policy gaps and political inaction. Uh, this is not come some kind of malafide action. It is because there are constraints with the political governments, the policy makers. There are uh, things which are beyond the control of the government or there are responsibilities which which, uh, which are beyond the economic rationale. Uh, 
Uh, these are actually putting in the carpet. Big big structural changes are changes are needed. And what uh, are remedial measures? Long term measures, structural transformation, outsourcing, and privatization of distribution system. This is key. <coughs> actually, you see K Electric. Although there are various issues with the K Electric, but uh, the government does not have to pick the inefficiency of the administrative. Uh, system of the k electric so uh, this is one of the um, start from the electricity distribution low recovery and high loss area start from there uh, it will be the first step then start uh, next step would be privatization of disco like the ctbcm is in uh, the concept that you actually uh, the assets remain with the means distribution assets like the transformers line transmission lines etc poles remain with the government but the electricity as a commodity should be can be sold by anyone means that is freely available then the privatization of discos that is a drastic step like the k electric but still i in my opinion this is this does not solve the problem fully Uh, interconnection with india iran and kasa 1000 in, in india we can interconnect india has huge uh, uh, they have uh, around five internal grids national grids and they have uh, uh, constraints as well but they their uh, installed capacity is huge and then there are some areas uh, uh, connected with pakistan do have uh, electricity uh, shortage when we have sur surplus electricity. So, <clears throat> like in your EU and the UK, EU is connected with UK, whole EU is in uh, one national grid and UK imports power. If you follow one of their national grids uh, Twitter account, they actually uh, are highlighting uh, hourly data that 10%, 20% is being imported from EU. So, we can Iran. We are connected with Iran right now. 104 megawatt is being supplied to the uh, southern Balochistan districts. And then Kasa 1000 is old project Central Asia, South Asia, 1000 megawatt from Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. But it's still uh, not Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan. Uh, two countries, this 1000 would be imported from that those countries. But still it's the World Bank funded project, but it is just uh, lingering on for the last many years and from india it can be, can be from four cents per kilowatt hour coal and renewable energy bhutan around four cents nepal around six cents so you'd see how we can have the import uh, we can import cheaper electricity rather than generating at nine cents or ten cents per kilowatt hour you just add two cents of uh, uh, transmission and distribution uh, margin and cost. So, so you, at six cents, you can provide electricity to the people. This is one of the uh, a technical kind of or economic kind of proposal. Of course, uh, we have political issues with India, uh, but right now, if the government uh, has has started to import some commodities, in, this is also a huge uh, kind of uh, incentive uh, in electricity sector as well. Diverse pool of power plants like renewable coal, hydro, competitive prices. Uh, if you connect with India, this can be we can purchase power from any of their power plants directly. And then, of course, we will have low capacity payments as well, uh, because we do not have to install our new power plants here. We can uh, on take and pay basis. Whenever we take, we will pay. We will not be working on take or pay basis. Take or pay basis is actually the capacity market. We will we will not have long term power purchase agreements. So we can have short term spot pricing and a mix of the long term agreements. Like in LNG, we have the long term agreements as well as the sh short term and spot pricing as well. Spot purchases as well. Power exchange like one is established in Tokyo right now. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the, there's the big data and machine learning tools. Uh, the power system planning can predict uh, power, uh, power demand uh, for each uh, minute and power generation for each minute. So uh, 
uh, we uh, the, in Tokyo they are using it. We should be utilizing these things as well. And then the long term continued distributed generation, battery storage, solar home system, reverse metering. We already have the reverse metering concept to solar and the micro grid, the small grids like in smaller areas. So we do not have to connect them to the national grid, and uh, the losses would be less if we have some micro grid, small grids. Short term measures are like uh, simple and robust procedures should be there. Federal and provincial governments receivable should be paid immediately. Direct debit accounts, like uh, uh, if ISCO has uh, sent a bill to the CDA that you uh, your monthly bill is fifty crore rupees. Uh, they should have access to the uh, CDA's uh, account and they can simply deduct that amount from them, automatically direct debited to the, their account, uh, credit to, to their account. About final tariff notification, like it, it should be like, uh, in my opinion, should be like the fuel price adjustment. What happens? Fuel price adjustment comes to you after three months. Just do it. Apply the tariff immediately. Keep it recovering from the uh, people. And once, uh, if you have recovered more than that, just uh, pay them back in, in like the negative FPA. Uh, and there are restraining orders, uh, of course, in various issues as well. Around in hundreds, of around around uh, uh, two, three hundred billion rupees are stuck because of that. So we can have a kind of special tribunal. Uh, like the service tribunal and election tribunals um, courts, like we have the, the, those uh, magistrates, etc., the power sector, but they are not working properly. So uh, instead of going uh, towards the courts and taking stay orders, uh, it should be going towards the tribunals and decided within a few weeks. And of course, the if there are a fault at the end of the consumer, just charge him the uh, the interest rate which you are actually the other consumers are paying to the power uh, power uh, generators. Then immediate measures collection of receivables can be multi sectoral teams use of police revenue department and disco staff. But then of course the this is not the solution. Solution is pins uh, like everyone is done it like uh, UK has done it like uh, we are doing it in K electric Japan has done it means the main uh, in EU it's a majority in majority of the country it's like the privatized uh, uh, distribution system just do it and then payment of pending subsidy amount the government should be paying immediately and these, uh, um, uh, for example, the Belarusian government amount can be adjusted against their uh, at source deduction uh, when the NFC award is uh, uh, from the divisible pool. Uh, like these things, may should be adopted. Otherwise, they start keep on piling up the interest rate, and the consumers have to pay that. Thank you very much. I hope you people are able to understand it a little bit. And these, uh, 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 it's very important sector. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, any question if we have some amount of time? Yes, sir. I'm sure. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us with the great amount of knowledge. I think uh, most of us never know about such uh, importance of power generation policy and when it comes to knowing in the development sector ke, you know the importing the energy and getting the uh, uh, transmission lines from other countries are reasonable rather than generating our own i mean that is a very valid point i mean um do we have any questions so you guys any can question? raise your hand or and ask accordingly Yes, Fayaz, go ahead, please. Sir, thank you so much for the presentation. It was very informative. Achha, ye, yesterday, jo, uh, din ek session ho, aata, main Sir, I think uh, 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 Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you can send the question in chat as well if you it's convenient. Uh, 
आपको बताया है की कैसे है मैं लेट मी शो इट टू यू गाइस इफ थोड़ा सा उसको लैबोरेट कर देंगे तो सर आसानी हो जाएगी मैं अभी अभी करता हूं अभी करता हूं अभी कर ये लें जी लेट मी सी ये अगर आप देखें ये आ, जो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंज्यूमर हैं इनको जो अब रिवर्स में अब टू से वन की तरफ देखें कि ये जो गवर्नमेंट है ना ये डिस्कोज हैं ये बिल चार्ज करती हैं कि ये जी आपने इतना बिल देना है ठीक है वो जो बिल चार्ज होता है वो उसकी जो अमाउंट है फॉर एग्जांपल उन्हें सौ रुपया टोटल बिल दिया हंड्रेड रुपीज वो हुआ ये कि उनको नब्बे रुपए मिले हैं दस रुपए नहीं मिले ठीक है वो दस रुपए जो है ये एड हो गए हर गवर्नमेंट हर डिस्को के पास डाटा है कि जी हमने इतने जो है भेजा था बिल और हमें इतना इस महीने मिला है तो दैट एक्चुअली अमाउंट इज कैलकुलेटेड और एडेड टू दर्कुलर डेट नंबर वन नंबर टू होता है कि लाइन लॉसेज हैं लाइन लॉसेज जो अलाउड हैं वो वेरी करते हैं डिफरेंट डिस्कोज के अलाउड तकरीबन मेरा ख्याल है अराउंड फिफ्टीन टू सिक्सटीन परसेंट ऑन एवरेज अलाउड है वो जो उसके ऊपर जो कमर्शियल लॉसेस हैं वो अराउंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट पे इसको ले जाते हैं वो जो फोर परसेंट जो नॉट अलाउड हैं वो भी दे गो डाउन द ड्रेन क्योंकि वो अलाउड नहीं है तो बिल के में नहीं आते तो अल्टीमेटली वो भी क्योंकि उनके पास तो पूरी फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स होती हैं हमारे पास इतनी बिजली आई हमारे कॉमन डिलीवरी पॉइंट पे जो थी इतनी बिजली दी सी ने हमने क्या किया उसको सौ यूनिट दिए सौ में से जो कंज्यूमर तक पहुंचे जो हमने उनके मीटर से चेक किया वो पहुंचे जनाब अस्सी यूनिट अस्सी को जो हमने बिल किया तो उसमें से जो टेन परसेंट आप डिडक्ट कर लेंगे बाकी जो है सेवेंटी टू यूनिट के जो है उन्हें रिकवरी होगी ये जो बाकी ट्वेंटी एट है आप जो अलाउड ये जो है इसमें से आप निकाल लें वो जो अलाउड है सिक्सटीन बाकी के जो है बारह है वो एड हो रहे हैं आपके सर्कुल डेट में उनकी जो अमाउंट है एड हो रही है उसके ऊपर फिर जो है वो ऐड होता है इंटरेस्ट ऐड होता रहता है तो ये दिस वन स्टेप अब अगले स्टेप पे आ जाए कि वो जो गवर्नमेंट जो है वो डिस्कोज जो है उन्होंने सीपीपीए को पे करना होता है वो जो अमाउंट वहां से स्वेल करती हुई आ रही है वो इधर आगे ऐड होती जा रही है इसके ऊपर इंटरेस्ट भी ऐड होता जाता है और उसकी जो सब्सिडी की अमाउंट है वो भी डिलेड सब्सिडी है वो भी गवर्नमेंट अभी पे नहीं कर रही वो जो कंज्यूमर्स को दो और उससे कम वाले यूनिट्स को तो अल्टीमेटली वो अमाउंट भी जो है क्योंकि ये तो फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट जनरेट होती रहती हैं आपकी ना ये तो ऑन आरली बेसिस ऑन डेली बेसिस जनरेट होती जाती हैं वो ऐड होता जाता है आपकी इतनी अमाउंट आ गई इतनी नहीं आई सो दिस कीप्स ऑन एडिंग तो ये क्या करते हैं सीपीपीए उसी हिसाब से कम पेमेंट जो है प्राइवेट आई को कम करती है आई क्या करती हैं वो उसी तरह कम पेमेंट फ्यूल की जो पेमेंट उन्होंने ली होती है पी वगैरह से उनको कम पे करती हैं इनके ऊपर फिर डिलेड पेमेंट का लेट पेमेंट सरचार्ज ऐड होता जाता है हर चीज पे इसमें सब्सिडी की अमाउंट जो पे नहीं हो रही वो आ गई इसमें लॉसेस आ गए इसमें लेस रिकवरी आ गई इसमें कुछ डिस्प्यूट्स हैं वो पेमेंट नहीं हो रही वो बेसिकली इसी इन्हीं चीजों में ज्यादा कंज्यूमर के एंड पे डिस्प्यूट है ना तो वहां से जो पेमेंट नहीं आ रही वो अल्टीमेटली पूरे साइकिल में ट्रेवल कर रही है अब यहाँ से करते करते ये जो सब्सिडी की अमाउंट है और डिले इन टैरफ नोटिफिकेशन है वो गवर्नमेंट के एंड पे यहाँ पे भी आ गया अल्टीमेटली so क्या होता है कि ये सारा स्वेलअप होके हर पॉइंट के ऊपर कैलकुलेट होता है कैलकुलेट होके एक सेक्टर का एक ओवरऑल निकलता है फॉर एग्जांपल ये जो सीपीपीए ने जनरेटर्स को ये नीचे पे करना है थ्री ने फोर को जो पे करना है ये इस वक्त अमाउंट तकरीबन फोर्टीन हंड्रेड बिलियन के करीब है इतनी अमाउंट है क्योंकि उन्होंने अपनी इन्वाइस जनरेट की हुई है तो वो जो पेमेंट है वो उन्होंने पे करना है तो कुछ उसमें बुक एडजस्टमेंट होती है अच्छा जी वो जो जनरेटर्स ने पे करना है आगे गवर्नमेंट को यानी एस एन जी पी एल और पी एस ओ को वो उसमें से फॉर एग्जांपल डिडक्ट कर भी लें तो फिर भी जो सेक्टर का ओवरऑल होता है ना सेक्टर का ओवरऑल एक जो होता है इट मस्ट बी अराउंड 
1.5 ट्रिलियन के करीब तो होगा जो कि एक्चुअल जो विच इज एक्चुअली नॉट एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ अकाउंट्स एंड आर एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ बुक्स इट इज एक्चुअली द पेमेंट विच इज विच हैज टू बी पेड टू सर्टेन क्वार्टर इन द प्राइवेट सेक्टर सो दिस इज हाउ इट गोज तो कैलकुलेशन हर हर पॉइंट के ऊपर होती रहती है एट द एंड वो एक स्वेलअप होके एक कट्ठा एक अमाउंट जो है वो गवर्नमेंट के पास आता है और सिग्नल तब सेंड होता है जब पीएसओ कहता है भाई मेरे पास पैसे कोई नहीं है मैंने बाहर से तेल कैसे लूंगा आपको नहीं पे कर सकता फिर एक एक इमरजेंसी काइंड ऑफ साइरन चलता है ठीक है भाई बकायदा उनके पास पूरा रिकॉर्ड होता है डेली बेसिस पे अपडेट होता रहता है तो उससे कैलकुलेट होता है और इसमें यह है कि अगर टू ट्रिलियन सर्कुल डेट की बात कर रहे हैं तो एक्चुअल अमाउंट जो कि कैश की पेमेंट कह लें वो जो होनी है या पैसे की पेमेंट होनी है वो दैट मे बी अराउंड 1.67 ट्रिलियन बाकी का जो है ये जस्ट एक की दूसरी की बुक्स में होनी होती है लेकिन गवर्नमेंट से प्राइवेट की तरफ जानी होती है कुछ प्राइवेट से गवर्नमेंट की तरफ आनी होती है तो वो ऑफसेट हो जाती है वो अमाउंट जो है लेकिन सेक्टर में ओवरऑल तो वो एक चल रही है ना जब आपकी बुक्स जो है वो लॉस शो कर रही है या रिसीवेबल शो कर रही है तो आपको लिक्विडिटी क्रंच आ गया आपने उस लिक्विडिटी क्रांच को फिल करने के लिए बैंक से लोन लेना है आपके पास जब बैंक से लोन लेना है और आपके पास कोई उसका कोलेट्रल नहीं है तो अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा आपको लोन जो है वो आपकी क्रेडिट रिस्क जो आपका ज्यादा हो जाएगा आपको फिर हाई इंटरेस्ट पे मिलेगा तो अल्टीमेटली ये चीजें एड ऑन होती हैं तो वो भी पास ऑन हो जाता है टू दी कंज्यूमर्स और दमेंट एंड फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट टू द कंज्यूमर्स बिकॉज दीज आर द पास थ्रू आइटम्स so this is how it is developed ye pura reverse mein chal raha hai panch se wapas ye supply chain hai panch char teen do ek aur lekin jo cash flow ki jo circular debt banta hai wo aise banna kyunki cash flow aise hai clockwise to isi tarah develop hota hota hai at the end yahan pe aake yahan pe aake pso kehta hai bhai bas ho gayi meri ab main nahi de sakta tel ya gas aise gpl kehta hai ki main de jaise k electric ki payment aise gc ko bhi around 80 billion मैंने न्यूज में पढ़ रहा था कि है सो दिस क्रिएट्स लिक्विडिटी क्रंच एंड अल्टीमेटली क्रेडिट रिस्क एंड क्रेडिट रिस्क मींस कि यू विल बी गेटिंग एट द क्रेडिट रेटिंग एंड यू विल बी गेटिंग द रनिंग फाइनेंस एट एट हायर इंटरेस्ट रेट ठीक है मेरा ख्याल है कुछ आपको कुछ अंडरस्टैंडिंग हुई है इसकी नहीं बिल्कुल सर शिबली फराज साहब की भी एक रिपोर्ट आई थी सेनेट में वो भी मैंने पढ़ी थी उसके अंदर बहुत डिटेल इन्फॉर्मेशन इन्होंने दी थी वॉट आई वॉज वनरिंग की मतलब अगर हम पी एस ओ एस एस जी सी एस एन जी पी एल इन तीनों के रिसीवेबल्स ट्रैक करें तो इसेंशियली हम मालूम कर सकते हैं कि एडिशन क्या हो रही है ना सर्कुलर डेट में बिकॉज दीज थी आर द मेजर प्लेयर्स जो पावर सप्लाई करते हैं जनरेशन सेक्टर्स को और अगर लिस्टेड जेन को अगर लिस्टेड जेनकोस की भी फाइनेंशियल हेल्थ देखते हैं तो उससे भी पता अंदाजा लग सकता है कि उनको सीपीबीए कितना वो ओ करती है जो उनको को नहीं दे रही है इस तरीके से फिर हम एक नंबर पे पहुंचते हैं बेसिकली मुझे जैसे अकाउंटिंग बेसिक समझने थे इसके नहीं वो बेसिकली ये है कि सिर्फ जो है पी या की पेबल्स नहीं होते बहुत सारी जगहों पे फॉर एग्जाम्पल कुछ लोग हैं जैसे कैप्टिव पावर प्लांट्स है ना कैप्टिव पावर प्लांट जो है वो कुछ जो है वो अपना फ्यूल खुद अरेंज करते हैं अब जो जैसे कोल की सप्लाई है कोल है तीन पावर प्लांट्स का थर कोल है फॉर एग्जांपल वहां पे पावर प्लांट्स अभी आ गए हबको का एक पावर प्लांट लग गया पोर्ट कासम पे है एक साहिवाल में है सो दे प्रोवाइड मेजर चंक ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अराउंड मेरा ख्याल है कि टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ आवर जो है क्योंकि नाइनटी परसेंट एटी परसेंट प्लांट फैक्टर पे चलते हैं सो वो उनका पी एस से कोई तलक नहीं होता उन्होंने फिर अपनी प्रिक्योर करनी है फिर उन्होंने रेलवे को फॉर एग्जांपल साहिवाल कोल वालों ने रेलवे को भी पे करना है बिलियंस पर है ना ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का तो वो फिर यहाँ से एक्चुअल इंडिकेशन जो है ना पीएसओ एस एन जीपीएल या एसएसजीसी के अकाउंट से आपको पूरी इंडिकेशन नहीं हो सकती कि आपकी जो है इस वक्त सर्कुलर डेट कितना है दैट्स वाई यू एक्चुअली स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ईच पॉइंट कि कहाँ किस किस का कितना है फिर उसका आप जब देखते हैं कि अच्छा ये तो यहाँ ऑफसेट हो जाएगा ये हो गया अब टोटल कितना जो एक्चुअल कैश फ्लो होगा वो कितना होना है फॉर एग्जांपल प्राइवेट जनरेटर्स को आपने जो 1400 बिलियन देने हैं वो देने ही देने हैं और वो जो 1400 बिलियन में से फॉर एग्जांपल उन्हें 100 डेढ़ सौ बिलियन या 200 बिलियन देना होगा आप हमारी गवर्नमेंट की पीएसओ एसएसजीसी और एस को वो डिडक्ट कर लें बट स्टिल यू हैव टू अरेज द मनी वो मनी कहाँ से अरेज करते हैं दे अरेज फ्रॉम बाई 
बाय हैविंग द डिस्कोज एसेट्स एज क्लैटरल और कमर्शियल बैंक से वो सिंडिकेटेड जो है वो एस uh, के थ्रू वो अरेंज करते हैं स्कूक स्कूक बॉन्ड्स का आपने सुना होगा सो वो दे डू इट द गवर्नमेंट अरेंज एंड पेज टू दैम और ये प्रॉब्लम है ये जो गवर्नमेंट है जब एक चीज को ओन कर रही है ना डिस्कोज को तो डिस्कोज की जो इनफिशियंसी होगी कुछ भी होगा द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू पे मीन्स के वो सवरन है ना गवर्नमेंट है गवर्नमेंट ने पे तो करना है कि भाई हम ओनर हैं इस चीज के सो so, कॉन्स्टेंट्स हैं दे अब प्राइवेटाइजेशन में इशूज हैं गवर्नमेंट जो इम्प्लॉज की यूनियन हैं वापडा में बहुत स्ट्रांग हैं तो ये वाले इशूज हैं आप आज प्राइवेटाइजेशन का करें वो दस हजार बंदा लेके इधर बैठ जाते हैं सो so, ये वाले इशूज हैं दीज आर द कॉन्स्टेंट्स ऑफ द हम ये नहीं कहते हम हमारे ये हैबिट है हमारे नॉर्मली हम यही कहते हैं कि बोरोक्रेसी और पोलिटिकल गवर्नमेंट को हम कहते हैं अच्छा ये नहीं कर रहे कुछ नहीं कर रहे ये सारी ऐसे नहीं आपने आप देखिए सब्सिडी जो अगल बोस्तान में ट्यूबवेल्स को दे रहे हैं या एजीके में दे रहे हैं या फाटा में दे रहे हैं बैकवर्ड एरिया बैकवर्ड एरियाज को दे रहे हैं तो वो ऑल दो वो बैकवर्ड एरियाज को इस सेंस में दे रहे हैं लेकिन दूसरी तरफ ये भी देखे कि मंगला पावर प्लांट जो है आपको आप उसके पिछले 20 साल का पढ़े वो 64 पैसा के ऊपर तो उसकी जनरेशन कॉस्ट है सारी चौसठ पैसा जो मंगला की पावर है मैक्सिमम वैसे बीस पैसा पे भी है तो उनसे वहां से वो उनका एसेट है तो वो पूरी पाकिस्तान यूज कर रहा है तो अल्टीमेटली उनको भी कुछ उसका एडवांटेज दिया जाता है सो दिस इज हाउ जब एक इस तरह डाइवर्स नेशनैलिटीज हो आपकी डाइवर्स कल्चर्स हों तो दिस इज हाउ यू एक्चुअली जो पॉलिसी पॉलिसी मेकर जो होते हैं या पोलिटिकल लीडरशिप वो उनको इकट्ठा करती है तो आप इकोनॉमिक रैशनैल के हिसाब से पॉलिसीज नहीं बना सकते आपने ये सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स को दिस इज द पॉलिसी मेकिंग एक्चुअली यू हैव टू टेक एवरी स्टेक होल्डर्स ऑन बोर्ड आप कह दें जी चार रुपए पे जो बिजली देगा हम उसको बिजली लगाने देंगे कोई लगाएगा आके नहीं आपने उनको भी प्रॉफिट देना ये इंसेंटिवाइज जो किया हुआ है इतना ज्यादा उनको को, कोई आपके पास प्लांट्स लगाने के लिए तैयार नहीं था ना तो इशूज होते हैं एक सोल्यूशन आप सॉल्व करते हैं पॉलिसी मेकिंग में हमेशा ये होता है कि आप सब कुछ करने के बाद एक इशू सॉल्व किया बट वो इशू सॉल्व हो जाएगा दैट विल क्रिएट न्यू इशू पावर जनरेशन आपके पास सरप्लस हो गई उससे क्या हुआ सर्कुलर डेट पैदा हो गया नो यू विल फाइंड वेज पॉलिसी मेकर्स का काम है कि एनालाइज करें एंड देन यू फाइंड द वेज के इसको आगे कैसे करना है अब आपके पास टूल्स बड़े आ गए हैं आप मशीन लर्निंग के थ्रू करें डीप लर्निंग जो ए के अंदर मशीन लर्निंग डीप लर्निंग एंड थिंग्स लाइक दिस उनको यूटिलाइज करें बिग डाटा को आपके पास एनालिसिस पूरा का पूरा सामने आ जाता है एंड दीज आर द टूल्स फॉर द फ्यूचर पॉलिसी मेकर्स आपको हर बंदे को वो एनालिसिस करने के टूल्स आने चाहिए लाइक द एनालिटिकल हर आर की प्रोसीजर है एंड वेरियस टूल्स लाइक दैट थैंक यू आई होप आई आई मेड अट बिट ऑफ सेंस टू यू Um, thank you so much sir thank you <laughs> thank you so much sir it was lovely having you our other speakers has joined uh, although sufyan has uh, his question in the chat box uh, i can uh, text you and you can reply back to that then no yes you you can text it to me i'll i'll be uh, you can text it